Alright guys, how you doing today? So, this is the first inaugural video of something I'm going to call Tack Box. Uh, essentially what it is, is it's mostly for me, putting it out there for you guys as well. Um, kind of like a little self-coping mechanism for fellow vets, things like that. Just a way for me to get out thoughts, as well as just kind of like share things that are on my mind, as well as like the evolving society we see today. Um, one of the things I see a lot of in today's videos that you'll find online is everybody talking about, you know, EDC and what kind of weapons best to carry, um, things like that. But one of the skills that I feel like a lot of guys don't talk about um, are traditional bow hunting skills or just bow skills in general. Um, it's a great way to not only have a range anywhere you go because you don't require a lot of space and you really don't need to do a lot for permit wise or shooting in or out of a city. Um, now I know bows might be a certain regulation depending on where you live ordinance wise so like inner city I don't know if you can have those things like that don't quote me on everything but as a as a majority you don't need a lot of space for them right um, nor do they are really loud so you can fire them just about anywhere um, so this is one of those things where I wanted to bring in the fact that as we develop these skills about shooting and moving and being able to survive on your own I wanted to bring bows back into this uh, I love bows. I started shooting them when I was probably about man, eight, nine years old uh, on a small little backyard setup with hay bales that my dad made for me. Uh, and, you know, fast forward that 22 years later and still fire them to this day. Uh, I went up from a simple little compound bow, you know, that you can buy at Bass Pro Shop to a, nice, to a really nice uh, compound bow. Uh, not too expensive. Pick this one up at uh, my local Cabela's. Just a gift to myself. Uh, but anyways, as always, I would like to show you guys the tack box here and exactly what we're going to do with it, alright? So let's get started. The great thing about this box is it's magic, and I'll show you why. Look at that, see? Nice little bow inside the magic tack box. Alright, let's see what else we got in here. Man, look at that, good set of arrows, nothing crazy. All right, and my pride and joy, just recently got this myself. Don't have to dig that deep because it's right here, but my nice little travel quiver. All right, uh, now this is made by a local company here in the United States uh, known as uh, Kafaru or Kifaru. I've heard people call it a whole bunch of different names, um, but this is their recent new quiver line that they just started a few months back. Uh, was able to get one picked up, shipped out to me, and they're a nice little ranger green. Um, so far, I've liked it. You know, easy construction, um, nice and solid. Good old Molly webbing for you know some of you local adventurists out there who want to be able to attach more things on there. Um, the kit itself comes with this nice little multi-purpose admin pouch or utility pouch, as well as a nice little water bottle pouch, which oh I forgot about. water always important right so goes in there nice and snug um, now the option does come with a belt but however I've got tons of belts lying around here for work as well as other things so I didn't really feel the need to buy one um, but it's really good construction nice and solid um, but still pretty malleable so it doesn't like feel too tight um, they also send you this nice little leg strap attachment for it uh, as well as some reinforced molly webbing on the back just to keep it in place from moving around on your hip too much. Uh, one of the things on the inside though for the actual belt system, if you get one right, you can slide a normal belt through but it has um, hook and pile retainer or you know velcro retainer. So if you have like a belt that has some of that on there or if you don't have it on there you can get some pieces sewn on there so when you slide your belt through you can cinch it down right on top of that so it keeps it from moving around on the waist. Um, but those are the biggest setups, right? My arrows, I got 12 of them, you know, mostly just so I don't have to keep walking up and down the field and all that. Nothing special about them, uh, based off of my draw length and, you know, the poundage on my bow. These are just pretty simple little 300 with 125 tip or grain tips on them, just practice tips. Went with the, uh, the, the, the mild fletching, not that as long as normal, um, works for me, but everybody else is gonna have to play on their own and 
honestly, two different colors just because I got a good deal when I went to go buy these. Um, so that's the biggest thing. All right, the bow itself, like I said, nothing crazy. Uh, also got this up on a nice uh, special deal uh, from Cabela's at the time. Just was on sale. This is the Fat Blackout series. I've had two other blackouts in the past. Loved them. The first one I ever had was the SS Blackout, which was great. Um, but I shot it for years and finally decided to upgrade. Sold that to a buddy of mine and actually was able to use that money to put it towards the new one. Um, so what we'll do is I'll fast forward everything for you guys. We'll get everything set up and we'll move down to the range. So you can, well, actually just face the range.